Well, good morning, folks. Welcome back to another absolutely beautiful morning on the farm. The sun just came up. It's looking just gorgeous out here. I'm coming to check on all the girls. Yesterday was haircut day for everybody. They're all looking kind of snazzy, ready to go to the show. Anyways, I was out at 5.30 this morning. Forgive the noise. And uh, Duchess, which is Charlotte's little sheep, she just had a set of twins this morning, so that's awesome. So today is actually a pretty special day, April 14th. 21 years ago, I actually hopped on a plane and uh, left England, came to Canada. So when I get off the plane in Calgary, it is not like this. It is not like this at all. It is minus 25 and a full on blizzard. And I get off the plane and I'm just like, oh, I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> But no, 21 years, and uh, it's been a fantastic journey, and and here we are. You know, it's been a long time coming until we've kind of accomplished some of the some of the long-term goals. So, I mean, there's there's the lesson learned is that, you know, don't lose faith and stick with it, and you'll eventually get to where where your dream takes you. Well, boy, I tell you, I just got home just in time. Just came back from Grand Prairie. It looks like Sharon has just had set of twins so that is, is exciting news we'll see how well she fares with being able to nurse with her giant giant udder and uh yeah so here we go That's about as fresh as you can get them. So I have a feeling these lambs aren't gonna be able to suck on their own, so I got the little toboggan and the milking pail. We're gonna to go to the milking stand. The way she's acting here, this has really got me wondering if there's not number three in here. It's been quite a while since number two. I guess we'll see. So there you have it. Triplets. It's our first set of triplets this year. It was almost an hour from the time she had the first one till the time she had this last one here. So Good job, Mama. So one of the things we were really concerned with this year was using two unproven juvenile rams. And then when Mavis only had a single, it made me even more nervous. But now to see a set of triplets come out of that Suffolk ram, that's uh, it's very encouraging. And then yeah, all the twins that have come out of Jock so far, they've they've looked really good. They're on the smaller side, but they've looked really good. So so far we haven't lost any. Knock on wood, we haven't lost any yet because it's you know just beautiful, gorgeous weather. In, in past years we've had uh, absolutely atrocious weather. Even this time, like this time of year is when we do it. But if you look back, like three, four years ago, we easily had 18 inches of snow. And I mean. <laughs> You hardly stand a chance right so in this case it's just gorgeous so we're very very thankful and appreciative of the whoever the weatherman is good job i would say that's our boy these these other two they were girls but i think this one's a boy so it's getting to thirsty chicken season. I tell you, there's nothing I hate more than having to fill up these waters every single day in the summertime because they just drink so much water. So solution to the problem, we got this uh, Duramate automatic water. It's basically a bucket with a float in it, attaches right to a garden hose. Now this thing was like, I think 40 bucks 
from, uh, was it PV Mark or UFA? Anyways, doesn't matter. Like 40 bucks, and it was touted as a cattle waterer. I mean, look at it, it's a bucket. You can attach it to a fence panel for sure, but it's not heavy duty enough for cows, definitely not. But it works fantastic to keep out in the middle of the yard here. The chickens, the cats, the dogs, they can all come out and drink from this. And I can just leave the tap on all summer long. Hopefully we don't get another cold spell here and just kind of undo all of this, but this will be, uh, be my solution for the next 140 days, hopefully, that I don't have to pack water to the chickens. So how all this came about is, I mean, you can see where Ranger's at right there. Yeah, dogs have, I don't know, they just have a fondness for drinking out of the chicken water. So the chickens, were, the chickens weren't empty in these every day. It was actually, it was actually Miko, the other dog that was just drinking out of these every single day and I could never keep up with it. And these things get heavy and the garden hoses and moving all this stuff all the time was just really inconvenient. So we found a solution. So now in behind the shop here, we have this no fill sheep water. It's basically just a trough with all of, we catch all the rainwater off the shop. This worked fantastic all winter long as the snow would melt off the black roof, it would fill that trough. But now that it's summertime, these boys are probably gonna drink quite a bit more. So I'm just gonna put a float valve on this and attach garden hose to that as well. But I gotta get a tee so I can tee into there, which I thought I had one, but I don't actually have one right now. So I'll pick one up at the hardware store next time we're in town. Over here in the milking stand now, we've got Sharon all barred up. And her little lamb's getting a drink. It's one of those things that's gonna require some management because there's no way his little mouth is gonna get on there without some assistance. And she's not the friendliest of mothers either. She uh, she likes to kick. She's so miserable, in fact, that I've actually got to hold her leg so the lamb can drink so she doesn't kick it in the face. I think this one might be down the road before next year. So these little ones are all fed up and tucked in with mom there now, so I think they'll be all right. That's 10 lambs on the ground already this year, so we're off to a heck of a start. Anyway, sounds like the donkey's telling me I need to go for a cup of tea, so I better let you go. I hope you have a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow.